Right now, if the ANC is serious about renewal, it should then put young people in the forefront. That's the view of the party's renewal commissioner, Fasiha Hassan. She's endorsed a position which seeks to have 40% of young people representation in the NEC. Fasiha uh, does join us now live in studio for this discussion. Fasiha, thank you very much for your time. I did hear you guys clap your hands uh, on Friday when the president opened the mm. policy conference. As soon as he mentioned young people, he he actually said 50 percent if I'm not mistaken. No thanks thanks Masero. 50 percent anything above 40 so remember 40 for us is the minimum it's not the ceiling in fact mm. we want 40 percent plus mm. um, and it's a very important position that we need to put forward both as the youth league um, and as young people in the mass democratic movement you know the reality is the majority of the population is under the age of 35 and so our leadership structure should reflect that mm. in fact if we were being more statistical, we'd call for 60% of youth representation. Um, but we're in a space where we're really building from something, we're growing. Uh, but more importantly, we are really, really putting our foot down and we're saying we as young people must enter um, mm -hmm. into the leadership structures, but also into the decision-making spaces, not just of the party, um, but also of the state. Mm. Speaking of the Youth League, um, do you think you'll be going into your own conference? I would love for us to go to a conference. Mm. Um, part of the challenge is also financial. Yeah. Um, being able to raise the funds in a very clean and ethical manner is a very important thing to us. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that. But also, Masako, we must remember we're rebuilding from scratch. Mm. Um, and this has been a situation where even me, I think the last time we had an elected structure of the Youth League, I was still in school. Um, and this shows you the fact that we really are building from nothing upward. Uh, but the reality is we've set quite a few branches. I think we've set the majority um, of branches in the country. We're now starting to set the, the regions. We have 56 regions. We've set quite a few of that. Um, but we're pushing. I just want us to be very clear, though. Relaunching branches, regions, provinces are fundamental to the renewal process. Mm. But it's about putting the politics back into the Youth League. Because yeah. you can have structures, but if you don't have the right politics of why we're doing what we're doing, then I think we've also missed the point of renewal. Mm. And in terms of how the NEC of the ANC looks right now, what is the percentage, what is the ratio right now? It's extremely low. Uh, the majority of the NEC is probably over the age of 50. Um, I'd have to check for specific statistics, mm. but we're not even talking 40%. We're talking 20% at most. And even that, I don't think there's a single person who's under the age of 35 mm. in the current NEC. And that's why December is so important to us as young people. Mm. And the other issue that was raised even by the DSG, Jesse Duarte, was not only the issue of young people. She raised a lot of issues about race in the ANC yes. and the number of Gender. females uh, compared to uh, males. And in fact, uh, I remember former President Tabumbegi at some point during policy conference this past yeah. weekend saying he's looking at this hall yeah. and there is not much um, in terms of race except just mostly black and colored people and actually mostly black. So even that is another war that I assume mm. you, you'd be trying to wage against. Um, so yeah, when we talk non-racism, we talk non-sexism, we're talking about youth representation, all of those are fundamental to the renewal process. Mm. But we have to ask ourselves a very deep question, and I say this um, as an Indian black person in, yeah. in the ANC, mm. are we attracting uh, different constituencies and communities? And it's extremely difficult. Um, for us, it's also about opening up that space to greater diversity. Um, but on the gender thing, this is a big one. We are calling, yes, for 50-50%, mm. but not just in the additionals. We're calling for 50-50 in the additional, uh, or sorry, in the office bearers. Okay. So when we're talking about women representation, it can't be that men assume the position of chair and secretary, were forced to deputize, number one, but number two, that we'll have one woman in the top five and then say, oh, we'll have more women additionals. No, mm. we're rejecting that. Uh, we want women at the decision ta making table. We want women to be center fold of how we actually do things in the party. And if we don't change those and I've, I've said this on public record if we don't evolve open up the space to young people um, to make it more non-racist more non-sexist we are doomed to fail mm. and that's something we have to be honest about because this is a do or die moment either we evolve or we must accept that we will not be brought into the current epoch of South Africans. Mm. And what you've just described, actually, we, we saw at the KZN Provincial Conference as well as the Johannesburg Regional Conference. But tell me something, what does the youth and young people think about the Step Aside Resolution? We support the Step Aside Resolution, also fundamental to the renewal process. 
integrity must, must, must be fundamental. Um, so for us, the reason why we also appreciate Step Aside is it's proactive. So many of our rules are reactive in nature. They look at what have you done wrong, what do we do now? Step aside is important because it allows one to voluntarily take a step, uh, a step back. It's a temporary process until you're able to clear your name, but it must show South Africans how serious we are um, about fighting corruption and more importantly, how serious we are about cleaning up both mm. internally and externally. No one in their right mind can argue against step aside. It is foremost to that process. Mm. So during your conversations as you spoke about step aside, etc., a lot of people of course have been saying that it's not being used fairly, that it's used by some to divide the party even further via factions, etc. Mm. Um, what's your response to that particular argument? The step aside rule must be applied consistently. There we must be very principled. Um, if there is somebody who has a case against them, there's charges, etc., etc., there is a need to do or to perform the step aside rule. Um, but it's something where we can debate the nuance of that. Mm. But what we cannot debate is whether the step aside should exist or not exist. Um, and we are also very clear, consistent application. And in fact, we would like to grow the step aside rule. How do we create a set uh, or framework rather um, of anti-corruption, but more importantly, ethical and principled leadership in the ANC, such that we don't even have to call on you. We shouldn't even have to say, Masako, you have a question mark. Step mm. aside. It should be something that we, as comrades, through our political education, through our principle, through our ethics, say, actually, I'm going to take a step back until we can clear our name because the organization is more important than I am. Mm. So, then, when do you, where do you stand then with the Palapala uh, and Farm Gate scandal that is hanging over the president's head? We must allow due process to take its place. Uh, we welcome the fact that the president has appeared before the Integrity Commission. We think that it should be on a continuous basis. Um, but it's difficult to comment until we have all the facts. And that's why we think due process is fundamental to that. Also constitutionally, right? Mm. We must allow the facts to be placed on the table, mm. whether it's in a court of law, whether it's in the Integrity Commission, and allow those facts to speak for itself. Mm. Mm. But then uh, doesn't it go back to you saying, okay, as a person with integrity, I as the leader should step aside while things are being sorted to clear my name, all of that argument, doesn't it apply also to the president? Mm. Like I said, we must allow due process mm. to happen. We're not going to run away from that. Okay. If the due process then says this is what must happen, that is, that is the case. Mm. Um, but what we're not going to do is be inconsistent in our process. This really is about the future of the organization. Mm. Um, but we also don't want to fall into, like you said, factional traps okay. of political fodder moving back and forth. Mm. We're going to be consistent, we're going to be principled, and we're going to ensure that the organization survives mm. above all. And coming back to the generation mix, etc., who do you think, uh, under the age of 40 or within the youth age of South Africa, would be a perfect mm -hmm. leader to go all the way to top six at the moment in the ANC? We would love to see more youth representation in the top six. Mm -hmm. um, even one of the conversations who, we've had, if you it's can. difficult for me to put forward names, right? Okay. We need to allow branches to speak, but we are definitely clear on youth representation within the top six or people that we as young people identify with who can represent our interests. But maybe one last point on that. It's not just about being active in the ANC. Mm -hmm. We would love young people who are community organizers, grassroots level organizers, to come into the organization and help us fix it, yeah. help us turn it around. The future of the country is at stake, and it's going to require every single one of us, young and old, by the way, to fix it and turn it around. Mm. Just very quickly, I have run out of time, and I'm pretty sure that my boss, Bazugule Diko, is going to shout at me for asking you this question. Then we're always in the same boat, <laughs> you and me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of young people have said that yourself and your uh, Ms. Mkachwa, for instance, who led the Fees Must Fall mm. protest, etc., uh, got to Parliament as MPs and forgot about the sure. mandate. That is uh, the accusation against leaders like yourselves because mm. they feel like you've now suddenly mm. become like church mice, etc. Mm. What is it like in the ANC as a young person? Mm. Ha how do you take that criticism mm. against you um, of being like church mice? Um, or is it because of the culture that when you try to speak, because there's so few of you as young people, the culture is that you're not listened to? Mm. What, what is going on there? I think there's a lot of the latter. We can never run away from criticism, especially criticism from young people. Mm. Um, but what is important to note is there's a structural issue here. If young people could see how we fight in portfolio committees, I've, in fact, in the Gauteng legislature, we've just passed a provincial act, which we haven't done in more than eight years, and that was under the portfolio committee that I now chair, the Township Economic Development mm. Act. In the upcoming weeks, we're going to have a youth and agriculture program. We're doing a whole lot of different things to fight youth unemployment. But I must 
must be honest, it's difficult. It's difficult because there's so few youth voices in the space. I mean, we're a handful. So what we need to do is also be cognizant of the fact that there's a structural issue, mm -hmm. and we have to change that structure in order for us to fundamentally change things. But I think that's a fair criticism because there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. What's important now is 2024. How do we get more young people in across political parties such that we can organize as a youth cohort that isn't just ANC, DA, EFF, etc. It's young people under the age of 35 fundamentally shifting how government in the state works. And that should be our goal as young people. Fasia, thank you very much for coming into studio and speaking to us. Fasia Hassan, uh, she's an ANC MP, and she came to speak to us basically about uh, the resolutions that were taken over the weekend, and they fight in five months, they elect a new top six.